This little building has a pretty good example of two kinds of wall framing, balloon framing and platform framing. The balloon wall framing is all around the perimeter. It's a 16 foot wall height, goes all the way from the bottom plate to the top plate in one continuous stud length with the windows and the doors cut into that tall wall. The interior partitions on the office end are going to be an example of platform framing. That is, the first floor goes up to the height of the first floor, and then the second floor is built on top of that platform and goes on up to the finish wall height, in this case, matching the balloon framing at the exterior walls of 16 feet. That's what we're doing this morning, plating, detailing, and raising up some little partitions, interior partitions, around the bathroom and the stairway. Let me show you something interesting. This is a beautiful two by six, kind of. It's vertical grain, and we did a video on grain orientation. But in vertical grain lumber, you can have among the most serious defects ever in the way the knot is oriented. Now I just dropped one into this board three feet. Shouldn't have made any difference. And yet, the other side of this thing was showing a spike knot. Now from that side, if you can see that, it didn't look bad. I mean, that's a manageable knot size, right? But it was a spike knot, which is called a spike knot because it goes all the way through the board and absolutely cripples the strength axis of the board. So it's something to watch for in a vertical grain board. You don't just have knots going through where you have lots of strength left. You have knots going through where the board is effectively cut in half. So watch out for spike knots. Well, I'm finally ready to bang together a few boards. I have one, two, three, four different stud heights. I've got some doorways that are squishy, and so I have to use a thinner trimmer. I've got a few little, a little things. I'm dividing the overhead clearance distance in this loft area in two. So it's a, a non-typical stud length. We'll talk about that maybe moving forward. It doesn't matter, except that seven foot six around here is the minimum um, ceiling height in a living area, and I'm going to end up with about seven foot seven or so, both in the downstairs and in the upstairs, but I better get that right. And so I'm going to nail these together. The bottom plates are pressure treated, and we've talked about that, right? I mean, corrosion that sort of rots off plain nails in a bottom plate. But all I've got is plain 16 pennies that I'm going to back nail or nail through the bottom plate up into the stud. And then once these things are up, I'll come around with the hot dipped galvanized gun nails and toenail them down from the top. Now I think that's a bit of a racket. I do not think that these nails in here are ever going to corrode because there's no moisture and in a carpenter's brain, you've got to have a little bit of water to get that corrosion started. Could be wrong, but just in case I am wrong, I'll use some eight penny toenails like I did around the perimeter on the bottom plate inside here. A mistake that some people make, and it's not a huge mistake, but it's just sort of a housekeeping thing, is this. When you're nailing the stud, let's say that that's the end of a stud, and this is a bottom plate. So you're nailing the stud to the bottom plate, like so. It's easy to get a little sloppy and just throw your nails in kind of wherever you want, tending towards the middle because, I mean, it's big there and you're supposed to shoot center of mass, right, to get an anatomically significant hit. but it's better to hold it further towards the edges of the board because can you see that that provides more resistance to twisting? When that board wants to twist while you're waiting in the summer months to get the drywall on there and capture everything, if your nails are towards the middle, there's little to hold that twist away. And if your nails are towards the edge, like this, it tends to hold the ends where they belong. I'll show you.
Well, that was dicey, too dicey, pushing the limits. But we've got it standing up there, and so now I'm gonna brace it into place, and the rest of them should be a little easier than that. So I'm gonna put a row of fire block acro across this little wall at eight feet. There's a couple of specials, that is a non-typical length at the end. There's one or two in the middle that might be specials also because there was a pipe that I had to adjust the layout for. So here's a way that you can get a pretty quick and certainly close enough fit on fire blocks on a small stretch like this if you don't already have a bunch of typical blocks cut and if you've got a significant number of specials. You do it like this. So right now I'm wishing I had my skill saw, but I'm becoming acquainted with this Makita. It's not a first name relationship yet, but we're getting close. You just leave the top of the stud exposed. You slide the end over to where it's visually flush with where it's got to drop in. You grab your saw. You eyeball so it drops in and you cut it and you err on the side of being too short. So let me show you that up close and personal. Keep in mind it's fire block and it's holding the studs in a straight condition. There's a gap that goes from 3 16th to zero. There's one that goes from an eighth to zero. But the rest of it is snug and the distance is good and the studs are held straight and it didn't take long. And if I get familiar with that Makita, it'll go even better. So can you see how the line is fouled on that bolt that's sticking out where the ram attaches? I noticed that a few minutes ago and I thought that, you know, that's almost a disaster. So I've got the wall on its feet now. I've got the weight pretty well off of the crane. I'm going to take the weight off the rest of the crane, clear that hang up, and then take up the slack. Well this whole adventure today, more circus act than adventure really sort of puts the lie to my assertion that one man can do whatever he wants more efficiently than a crew because if I would have had a three-man framing crew here today instead of just me and my crane this would have been done like completely by the end of the day and these little three walls would have been stood up in about an hour an hour and a half perhaps but I didn't have a crew did I I just had a nail gun and a Burke bar and a, an old Ford truck with a homemade crane and sometimes as it turns out that's all you gotta have. So this whip, this much abused whip, I drug it behind my truck for a while, a year or so ago, and it got shortened up about six feet. It's just a six plug trailer um, end wired into two momentary switches inside an electrical, what is that? I don't know, some sort of an electrical contrivance, LB, I don't know. I forged that thing so I can hang it. A couple things I just have to take care of. I've got to stretch this whip back out because when I've got my jib on, like you watched me doing yesterday, I really can't reach where I need to reach with this whip. So I got to extend that. And I need to maybe turn this hook the other way so it shelters these switches. Because I got into a bit of a bind bumping that switch when I was under the load. Well, that's it for the crane work, right? I mean, that little crane on that truck just saves me every day. Not every day, but every day I'm doing this, it saves me. It's the best chiropractor on the planet. I neglect it, just like everything else I own, and it just keeps showing up. That crane has grit. 
And I think that that is something that I'm going to have to remember as I get older because I'll tell you what, just like a sanding belt that's removed a lot of stock, it's easy for our grit to wear down. And so old guys, those of you who are my age or older or approaching that, let's toughen up, huh? I mean, enduring to the end is a real deal. And so we may have thought we had grit when we were young, but take a chapter out of Cy Swan's playbook and just keep the pressure on it. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.